time for your shit. Alright, we finished fighting the first boss in the train graveyard, and I did say first boss, there will be another one coming up. And it hates me to have to repeat myself a bunch of times, but I tend to do it a lot anyway, so hey, rock and roll. The one of the problems I have with this game is that it tends to stretch things out. Now, stretching things out necessarily a bad thing, but in this case, the train graveyard takes too long. It's kind of killing the momentum of the story when we're supposed to be getting back to Sector 7 as quickly as we can, but we're getting bogged down in places, a bunch of different places. Okay, the graveyard took a long time. The sewers took a long time. We had lots of fights. We had puzzles to do. We had the work up a generator to get things working and then we went into the train graveyard and we were outside the train graveyard then we found our way inside of a building in the train graveyard and we're eventually gonna find our way outside in another part of the train graveyard it's just too much time being taken here and it's killing the sort of momentum and the energy of the story as we're going through an area that really should be rather hectic and frantic we should be trying to get through as quickly as possible now I get if it's a long way, and they want to make this game, the world of Midgar, feel bigger than it seemed like in the original game. It does feel like it takes too long. But that's just me. Those who lose their way out there in the dark of night will never, ever find their way back home again. What do you guys think would have happened if they'd caught us? I wonder. Maybe they're the ones who were caught. Can we just drop the hole? What if they're trapped here, and can't leave? Another thing that I mentioned before, but I'll bring up again. I don't quite get how the idea of ghosts are supposed to work in the world of Final Fantasy VII, since um, a person's energy of their life is supposed to not just dissipate, not supposed to linger, really. But... Well, you know what? No, I might be wrong about that. There might be instances in the original game where the um, idea of ghosts shit no never mind I don't know I've got so much materia a lot of materia that I'm never gonna use stuff I don't even know I have and I wouldn't figure out how to use it even if I had the chance to hmm. Just like we hoped. What a relief. We should be able to get through now. Let's find out. The materia system in this game is near enough similar to the materia system in the original game that it feels familiar, and I guess it works well enough. But one of the problems I have with this is the game is kind of short in a certain way. Not like in the number of hours it takes to complete, because it takes like it's like a 30 hour game. Long enough, really. But, as I had mentioned before, how it sort of compresses and then extends the way the story works out in awkward ways. So you have, okay, so we have a section of the game in the original game going through the sewers into the train graveyard. They'll take 10, 15 minutes, maybe a little longer if you get stuck in battles. Then you find your way to the other side and then you ascend the pillar and all that kind of stuff. Then you're free to... Uh, explore towns and all of that, where you could, say, buy materia, for example, the point of what I'm saying now. Because of that, there are a lot of it not taking as long, because it doesn't take as long to do that. There are a lot of incidents in the game where you have a chance to uh, explore the area, find new materia, find ways to utilize it, and all that kind of stuff. Not so in this game. Because these dungeons are so long, stretching out these sections of the game, there aren't as many instances in between dungeons where you would be in a situation where it made sense to go and buy materia or figure out what your materia does to really experiment with the game a little bit. So unfortunately that meant that I'm getting a lot of materia, so much materia from going through the game that I don't feel the need to buy any. And a lot of the materia I find, I don't really deem to be useful enough to really use. We're through. Great. Let's head outside. Huh? Wait. Uh, 
A girl? Marlene? And the kids that the Black Wind carries away have to live in the train graveyard forever and ever. So you have to stay far, far away from there. All right then, I will. Oh, you know Betty? Yesterday she went with her daddy to... to... Hmm? When is daddy coming back? Actually... He might not make it home tonight. Marlene, what are you? We can't waste any more time here. What was that about? Nothing you need to worry about. Let's get going. My thoughts exactly, Tifa. We can't waste any more time here. But we're gonna. Okay. Nope, oh, there's a bench. <laughs> and I think it's they should have made some kind of animation that the other characters will sit next to you on the bench because you sit down and then when a screen comes back you have Aerith and Tifa just standing there watching Cloud sit it just seems weird they couldn't sit next to him or anything it's weird <laughs> anyway we're in this other we're on the other side of the train graveyard but we're actually still in the train graveyard so we're not really on the other side now are we it's a turntable here, though. Strangely enough, it in the original game, while going through, it didn't occur to me that Marlene wasn't Barrett's biological daughter. Now, it's pretty obvious in this game, but you gotta remember that the original Final Fantasy VII was a PlayStation 1 game where the um, characters had really low polygon counts and all that kind of stuff and especially unimportant characters like Marlene is not a terribly important character they didn't dump a lot of effort in her design so she was just small and I could tell she had a lighter complexion than Barrett but that didn't necessarily rule her out as being his daughter later in the game you of course run into her biological father Dine and I think Dine is how you pronounce his name and then like all that comes and then you come to realize like oh all right so this is where she came from just for some reason it didn't occur to me that that's wasn't his biological daughter of course in this game it's it's quite obvious i'm a little lost when it comes to trying to figure out how old the city of midgar is supposed to be because if you look at an environment like this I see shipping containers and all that kind of stuff, and, and trains which are somewhat functional. But this stuff has definitely been abandoned here. How long has it been abandoned? This path is blocked too? But we're so close, I can see it. Uh, hey, do you think these trains might still run? Could give it a try. That's an aspect of modern design that I'm not that fond of in a lot of cases, because Tifa was far enough away that she shouldn't really be all that loud. But the fact is, she was far enough away that you couldn't hear what she was saying kind of prevented you from hearing her. Hey, who started this fire? Eh, whatever. Good call. Looks like it still works. I knew it! Everybody good? Yeah. Huh? Hmm? Uh, I think that's... Flight separation code is... Hmm. Got it. Yeah, yeah, of course I do. We just got the one thing in ever. It's just that. Thank <laughs> you. 
death wish or something? Because I sure as shit don't. What's happening? Do you have a problem? Not really. Small arm fire with some local boys trying to defend the pillar. There would be fear of that. Sending you in first. The more players that take the stage, the better. So that's what we are. Why that mean when the mission is complete? Tifa. You're really gonna drop the plate. They won't if Barrett and the others have anything to say about it. All we can do now is keep moving. Please. Please let us be in time. They're trying to put a lot of effort into making Reno, at least, come across as a bit more of a sympathetic villain. Somebody who... Well, I mean, all of the Turks were really just sort of doing their job, and they never held any personal animosity to Cloud or any of the other heroes. But Reno still did some terrible shit in the original game. And in this one, they're trying to make it seem like, well, he's doing it, but he doesn't want to. But he's just doing it because it's his orders. That's what they're telling him to do. Why am I not surprised? I don't know. I... I kind of don't think it's necessary because people like the character of Reno and the character of Rude, and it's not really dependent on them coming across as sympathetic characters. I guess sort of it's, um, they didn't realize that Turks would be that popular. So look at that! So they didn't realize while developing the game that the Turks were going to be as popular as they were. And when they ended up becoming popular, they're like... Oh, okay, so we can capitalize on this. So they, on some of the extra media, they, other games and all that, they played the Turks as being um, more important characters and all that, like in Before Crisis or, or whatever the one with Zack Fair was called. But anyway, the when you get to something like Advent Children or in this game, you kind of want to not play up the more overtly hostile and uh, negative aspects of the characters because they're characters that people like. And you're like, well, people like Reno and people like Rude, so we don't want to have them going and doing these vicious, violent things. People wouldn't like that. But that's how the characters were originally, and that was the character that people took a liking to. Sure, the Turks never held any sort of personal hatred to Cloud or his friends, but they still were enemies, and they still did bad things. And just trying to sort of wash that off is seems a little bit cheap. Let Rude be an asshole. Let Reno be an asshole. It's the way they were. Not every villain and not every character has to have some sort of redeeming quality about them. More frickin' barrel fires. Thanks. Let's go. Alright, I think that's the last train we have to move. There's really only, like, two trains in the original game. I think there were two trains that you had to move for, uh, like, platforms to jump across. And this, they've done, what, three? Yeah, three, I think it was. Oh, look, more lights. This place seems a lot more developed than you'd think it would be. Oh, are we in the, are we at the train station now? Well, there's a, well, you know, there was a potion station. There was a potion station in the train graveyard, too. I don't think we're quite out of it yet. 
anytime you see a discount on things, buy it now. Because it's a lot cheaper than you'd find it elsewhere or in other uh, potion stations. So even if you don't think you're going to use it, just buy it anyway. It's not a lot of money. And you can definitely... Uh, it's nice to have things like that, even if this game isn't particularly difficult. Almost there. Come on. Right. The kids that the Black Wind carries away have to live in the train graveyard forever and ever! You're just trying to help. Aren't you? Alright, so it's time for another boss battle, and I'm gonna fast forward through this one, because I don't, I didn't know how to fight this thing to begin with, so my strategy isn't really gonna be all that good, and I don't think anybody watches any of my stuff for the sake of figuring out how to get through a game, or at least not mostly anyway. So I don't feel bad about this. Plus the battle took like 10 minutes. Anyway, it seems to be some lore regarding the train graveyard that Merlene had mentioned where children go in there and they get 
swept away. And I guess it being swept away by this this um, ghost monster here, which is based... It wasn't a boss in the original game, but there was an enemy that looked like this. Just a regular enemy. But this thing apparently was taking kids that get lost in the graveyard. Now, there was some, some issue like, okay, so you saw a ghost of Aerith there, and Aerith never died there. You saw a ghost of Marlene. Marlene never died there. So, I don't know if, are these ghosts really kids that were taken away? I'm going to say they probably were. But this is the monster that's keeping them from moving on. So, they're trapped here because of this thing. So, I guess, uh, you know, it's a good thing that we're going and killing it, so. Huh. Boss battles do take a while. Fortunately, I never died in this fight, so I don't have to edit the video and put everything together. Load! Look out! All right, that was probably just an animation that played um, visualizing the difference between different phases of the battle. Because normally I would say something like that was completely unnecessary to happen in the middle of a boss fight. But it would give you some sort of a visual indication that something has changed and perhaps is going to be some kind of a different tactic required for you in order to um, not get yourself killed. But either way, it, the boss never ended up being all that difficult. It staggered. Just beat the piss out of it. One That's more shot! Hold on, guys. We're coming. And you can go to hell! Let's go. Right. Right. Hmm. It's that ghost. Wow. So long. I don't know, the existence of the ghosts kind of screw something up for me, because there are the ghosts, and then there are the spirit-like things, which keep appearing throughout the game. They're distinctly different things, though. And that's something you have to keep in mind here. The ghosts and the spirits that we saw, like chasing Aerith and all that before, they're not the same. Use lethal force! Just your lethal force right here, asshole! 